And I'm very pleased today to welcome another candidate for the presidency of the United States of America, Allison Kennedy, who is the Socialist Workers' Party candidate. And uh, Ms. Kennedy, thank you so much for well, joining thank you. us. Thank you. It's a pleasure being here. Well, it's a pleasure to have you here. And it was interesting when I heard that tomorrow, I believe, you're going to have a press conference. Yes, is that we correct? Are. Tomorrow you'll be having a press conference, and it reminded me a little bit of Utah's very rich socialist uh, past, mm-hmm. and especially in the beginning of the 20th century. And I happen to have a little home down in one of our great mining uh, communities, Eureka, at one time. Uh-huh. It was the ninth largest town in the state of Utah, second largest mining district in our state. And it was considered to be one of the socialist capitals of, of Utah, mm-hmm. along with Murray, along with Ogden, and along with uh, Salt Lake. And mm-hmm. as a matter of fact, the leadership in Eureka at that time was primarily socialist, including even the leadership in the LDS church down there. The LDS bishop was a socialist oh, really? <laughs> at that time. Uh, tell us a little bit about your background. And I was I was reading a little bit. I, right. I, I couldn't help but be intrigued with uh, the coal mining background, right. garment worker, things right. of that nature. Even here in Utah, you were mining coal. Right. Yes. Um, well, the Socialist Workers Party is the working class alternative in this election. We we are the alternative. It, we're the working class party in this election. Our party is the party of the working class. And I joined the United Mine Workers in 1981. I began working in the mines in West Virginia and was part of the first layer of women who fought their way into these jobs. Um, at that particular time, Coal mining jobs were union jobs. United Mine mm-hmm. Workers was a very strong union, and coal miners were all union in the, in the United States. Today, it's the opposite. Weren't there also some superstitions and even prejudices yes, against there was. women there, underground? There was uh, one of the prejudices was that if women went into the coal mine, the the roof would cave in. Right. <laughs> but you know, but when women started getting hired, they soon proved themselves to, to be the best union fighters. They fought for safety on the job. They fought to strengthen the union and prove themselves as good workers. And one uh, union men over to their right to work in the mines. United Mine Workers was a big supporter of, of uh, women working in the mines, and uh, it really strengthened the union. I lived in Utah, actually, um, from 2002 to 2006, and I was part of a 10-month strike and a really a was more than just a 10-month strike. It was more than a three-year battle uh, with the co-op mine. This was a mine that hired um, majority workers from Mexico and super exploited these workers, paid them minimum wage to work in an underground coal mine. Mm -hmm. And when I began working there, we began to to talk to the United Mine Workers about getting the union in there because the workers wanted to change the conditions. And when I started working there, the workers were already talking about this. Right. And uh, in, in, in their own ways, in the mine, they had been, been standing up for their rights. But this strike won widespread support throughout Utah. Um, you know, the major papers did editorials in favor of us, and uh, we got support from Utah as well as throughout the country. And we were able to... Um, win the right to have a union election, uh, which we did uh, do. Uh, and today, this mine is out of business. Uh, and we we believe this was a victory that this mine went out of business because of the strike. Well, what about the loss of jobs with a business like that? Is that, is that a Well, concern? that's a big crisis. It's part of the, the worldwide crisis of mm-hmm. capitalism that's happening. There is a world con- contraction of trade and production, And this has hit mining very, very hard. One of the things I learned when I lived in the Price, Utah area in 2002, that's when I moved there, there were 14 working mines. Today, there's seven. Mm -hmm. Plus, today, there are no union mines left in that area. Yeah. Uh, the last union mine, Deer Creek, closed 10 days before Christmas a the, year the, ago. The reason I bring that up is that's one of the consistent complaints that I hear about unions. And by the way, I really believe there is a place for unions, so I'm, I'm not down on unions. Uh, 
But I, I've seen it even in my own industry where, you know, they still uh, way past the time when a platterman was necessary, it was still required. And like a fireman on a, a locomotive when they had already gone to diesel and there was no place for a fireman, but the unions insisted that that job be, be held. Many people are saying the union d- demands are actually uh, putting businesses out no, of no, business. No, that's not what is putting people out of work. What is what is causing the high unemployment? You know, last week they came out with this jobs report and claimed that there were all these jobs created, but what they didn't tell you is most of those jobs were part-time jobs. What mm-hmm. they didn't tell you is the number of people they don't count in the unemployment statistics has, gr- has grown. Uh, that the, the whole idea that there's more jobs being created is just a myth. And the, there, there is a world slowdown in trade and production. We're, we're living in a time of an historic crisis of capitalism. We're in a world depression. This is a very deep crisis. It's, it's, it's a deeper crisis than what existed during the 1930s depression. Well, I think anybody who's not concerned about the shrinkage of the middle class, and a lot of it are these great jobs that we are talking about now, but again, even in my own industry, I've seen the, the unions just about put people out of business by insisting. Well, I don't agree that that's what puts workers out of business. What, what, I don't believe that's what Well, work- what, what is the justification then for keeping an obsolete job in place when it is no longer relevant well, or necessary? Well, I don't believe coal mining is an obsolete I job. I didn't say it was. I talked about my industry, which well, I, I am very familiar with. Oh, well, I'm not that familiar with it, actually. <laughs> but no, I, I think that, you know, when... Yeah, things change, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, but when those things begin to happen, we need to fight for a massive public works program in this country to put people to work. There's many things that could be done in this country, building the infrastructure, building roads, building hospitals, building schools, building bridges. Coal miners, for example, could be put to work mining coal to provide electricity for the $2 billion people in the world, one-third of the world, by the way, that do not have electricity, do not Mm -hmm. have energy, sources of energy. Um, It's a, you know, I I think that's appalling in in the year 2016 that a third of the world doesn't even have access to electricity. No, absolutely. So this is what needs to be done, including, you know, the workers in your industry that maybe have been put out of work because of changing technology. Well, we ran a story just last week that uh, there was a good portion of one of our uh, uh, reservations for Native Americans that had yet to have electricity there, oh, which is just yeah. ap- appalling in our country. Right. Can you stay just a second more through a break? Sure. And we'll come back because I'd like to talk about uh, the, the difference between you and Bernie Sanders, for example. That would be wonderful. And I'd like to talk about where this is going to go and also your vice presidential uh, candidate, uh, Osborne Hart. And we'll get into all that when we come back for just Thank a few you. more minutes. Yes. Okay, and then we'll talk a little bit about the uh, the press conference tomorrow uh, representing and a candidate for the Socialist Workers Party for the 2016 race. I'm very pleased to have here in studio with us Allison Kennedy. Let's take a break. We'll come right back with more of today's Doug Wright Show all here at KSL News Radio. A lot of working people are very uh, disgusted and angry about what's happening in the United States. They do not, and the world, they do not see uh, the Democratic Party and the Republican Party is doing anything about the problems that we face. And I think that's why they got a lot of support. Now, Sanders, you know, he, he's, he's a Democratic Socialist, but it's completely different than what the Socialist Workers Party is. One big difference is we're a working class party. And the second big difference is that we say that the problem is the capitalist system. Bernie Sanders believes the capitalist system can be reformed, can be improved by passing legislation. But we believe that the crisis is a very deep crisis. It's an international crisis of capitalism. And our party believes that as we see bigger struggles by working people, which we will see, we can build a much more powerful movement in this country to take political power and completely change the class that's in the government and begin to organize a society that's based on using the wealth that working people produce to meet people's human needs. Today, that wealth is taken by the capitalists. Um, It's not put back into meeting people's needs. Many people who are listening right now take pride in the capitalistic system, and they believe in free enterprise and everything, a two-party system. I mean, there are all kinds of terms. Uh, And we, we only have a second or two here, but... 
what would a United States look like? What would the government structure look like? What would the priorities look like under an administration with you as president? Well, I, th- I think that a, a, when we, we see a situ- when, when we see the, the time when working people take political power and organize a completely different kind of government, for one thing, we, will p- we would put the needs of the world's humanity um, a, a num- as a big priority and use every uh, – United States is one of the most advanced countries in the world te- technologically and everything else. We can use all of the wealth that we produce to meet all of the needs of humanity. We will begin to solve things like the – problem I mentioned earlier that a third of the world doesn't even have electricity. We can working people here could solve that problem. Farmers could if farmers were allowed to produce productively, they could solve the the problems of famine in the world. There's, you know, the farmers in the United States are the most productive in the world and their their uh farming uh, could be used to provide food for everybody mm-hmm. in the world uh, and, because and we think, wouldn't be organizing all this on the basis of making profit. Well, and I think many people would, would agree with you on the productivity, but I think that the argument would be that that is because of the capitalist system and the competition and things of that nature. And, and obviously this, you know, we, we could, we, we need a whole lot more time <laughs> to right. flesh this out. But a, a quick final question, and I also want you to mention our, our vice presidential candidate uh, on your ticket. But would the, would the structure of the United States government change the representative form of government? Senate, I think we so would on? figure we would see the first thing we're going to have to do is build a very powerful movement, workers movement, uh, and that would change and make a revolution in this country, take political power. And then once we begin to do that, we're going to figure out how we're going to structure ourselves and begin to solve the world's problems. There, there's no, like, br- blueprint on, on exactly how a government would come about. Yeah, so this but really, I, one thing I will tell yeah. you, it will not be a big, gigantic government like we have in this country that's bureaucratic, that doesn't do anything about meeting the people's needs in this country. The government would be a small government and would be the, in the hands of the working people. Tell us about your uh, vice presidential uh, running mate, Osborne Hart, very quickly, and then I've got a break. Oh, uh, my running mate, Osborne Hart, uh, he is um, from Philadelphia. He ran for mayor in Philadelphia in the last election, was on the ballot there, got a lot of support. Uh, Recently, my running mate uh, visited uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, uh, where Alton Sterling was brutally murdered by the police there participate in the demonstrations, demanding that these cops be prosecuted. By the way, I do support the fight of the young Somalian worker that was shot by the uh, Salt Lake police. Um, I think the cops that shot him and I guess have now paralyzed him should be prosecuted for this. So you don't think the district attorney going through the due process of law who found that that was a shooting that was justified? Well, I think that's a very common thing that happens in this country. The cops are let off. I I live in Chicago. I'm from Chicago. This is a very common thing that happens in Chicago. Uh Uh, But, you know, what's happening is and our party is uh, on the front lines part of the fight against police brutality in this country. And we think these demonstrations are very important and and they do have an impact. I I have got to break here. I I thank you for staying an additional segment with us. What time is the press conference tomorrow? The press conference is at at 10 o'clock. And our press conference is to uh, let the uh, workers, working people in the state of Utah know they will be able to vote for our party in the election. We will be on the ballot. We've turned in... uh, I think we have certified 970 signatures. That's close. You need a thousand. And we are, and we're turning in the another hundred today, which okay. we know we'll we'll have the thousand, and we'll, we will be on the ballot. And we're going to have a press conference tomorrow that celebrates the victory of that. And thanks to all of the workers in the state of Utah that signed our petitions to put the Socialist Workers Party on the ballot. Ms. Kennedy, thank you so much for well, joining you. us here at KSL. And as I mentioned, we could talk for hours and hours and hours here because this just, is pretty deep stuff. Just so, one. Quick thing. Okay, I've, I've got any, to run to Rio here. <laughs> if anyone wants more information, they can contact 415-233-0278, or you can look up our party on www.themilitant.com. Themilitant.com. Yes. Thank you so much Thank for you. joining us here at KSL News Radio.